Oh, yeah, that's right. Hello, and welcome again to the Hubble and Girlfriend Wrestling Show here on YouTube. Bye, Dave. I have to back up a little bit. Reverberation. Oh, Bo Tom. And my girlfriend is kind of off, getting ready to go see her parents. Unfortunately, I have to work. So I'm here to talk about some wrestling. And I'd like to thank everyone for liking, sharing, and subscribing. You can always feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And I think this is going to be kind of a short show. I do apologize for that. Um, probably just based on recaps and the fact that tomorrow is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And I still have to get pickles for my sandwich. Because my Thanksgiving dinner is just chicken sandwich. Sliced chicken sandwich. Cheese. Sour cream and cheddar chips. Pickles and a Coca-Cola. No, I don't even get a beer. Darn, that sucks. So I get off work at 5 a.m. I'm not having a beer at 5 a.m. This seems alcoholic-ish. But enough about that, my woes. Let's talk about some wrestling. Let's turn that frown upside down. Maybe. Uh, this was SmackDown. Um, it's a start off pretty. It's start off okay. Um, it shows a Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey highlights from SummerSlam. How Charlotte kind of snapped, and then pay, and Char Charlotte comes out with a promo. Still goes nuts. They still chant Becky, Becky. Uh, Paige came out and says, "There is no need to understand. No, no need to explain. You just snapped." Then the Iconics come out. Bad idea, Iconics. Then they started to run down Charlotte Flair and how mean she is. And they're, they're kind of like the typical mean girls. And I think the thing that helps them the most is that they have that. You. Is that they have that Australian accent. And I guess it is true. I guess women with accents are kind of more. Ooh la la ish. Is that old phrase? Exotic is erotic. Can't believe I said that. Flipping, my girlfriend would never like me saying that. But that's the way it is. Um, so again, so the first match of the night was off with Charlotte Flair versus Billy Kay. Billy Kay has long legs. I've probably said that a couple times. Um, started off really as a near squash match to begin with. <laughs> and Billy Kay does have a pair of lungs on her. Man, she can scream and hit those high notes. Woo! Can't even do that. Lost. Because I can't. Man. But Billy Kay, she has a pair of lungs. She should scream, and I think my cat could hear her. I think, I think got my cat's attention. She, she just looked up at the TV and then kind of sauntered off to her little bed. Take a little cat nap. I watch wrestling. That's what cats do. Every so often she comes in the room. But again, it was pretty good. Um, again, there was a numbers game because remember Peyton Royce was there. So it's a little bit of a numbers game whenever you face the Iconics. So Charlotte did overcome that. Um, Peyton Royce got involved. Charles like, ah, uh ah, -uh. I'm not done yet. You, Peyton Royce, me, Charles Flair, we fight now. And so, the first match of Charlotte versus Billy Kay, it was a good match. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a cheeseburger match. So the second match, like a gauntlet match, which is pretty cool. Shows that Charlotte's a badass. And so it was Charlotte versus Peyton Royce. Be careful of hubris, Charlotte. That's the only thing I'll say. 
And again, wearing, and this time actually, Peyton fares better. But of course, she's a fresher of the two. Charlotte's a little bit winded. She shows that she's a little bit exhausted from her last match. And Peyton's obviously the fresher of the two wrestlers. And this was the first time I noticed that the Iconics were actually wearing, for the most part, the same style, colorish ring gear. I'm not that keen on, on female fashion. You can just ask my girlfriend when she's back. But sometimes stuff that I think would look good on her. But I think every boyfriend does that, though. So that's probably a universal. So again, the Iconics. Again, the, there's a classic bubble team. Then eventually, Charlotte well, starts to really lay into Peyton Royce. Billy Kay gets involved. We gotta fill the death to finish, baby! Nobody wins! But this is the WWE, sweetheart. So that means somebody has to win. So, Charlotte, you got double teamed against? You're the winner, Charlotte. The death to finish, baby! Baby! Only way you should say baby. So, I guess this was fun. It wasn't bad. I think the fact that Billy Kay got involved, and he kind of knew that was going to happen, I think. So, it was predictable. So, when, when things get predictable, it's a ham. Then we have a Rey Mysterio Jr. promo. And this is nice because this harkened back to the older days when wrestlers would cut promos before they face each other. Because, again, this was a promo, and he was talking about how he's going against Randy Orton and how they face each other in the past. And it's really good. It's just a little building for the match. Then we have Miz TV. Miz pumps up, and Miz is so happy. Like, he... He invites Shane O'Macdown, the leader of the fearless SmackDown team. And they didn't do much. Miz is a suck up. Miz is good at two things. He's good at the heel who tells truth and being a suck up. Two things the Miz is very good at. Again, heel who tells truth, being a suck up. So eventually he calls out two, I guess, local jobbers. Or you thought they were jobbers. But now they're local enhancement talent. Because even though The Miz, for the most part, refused to tag in Shane, even though Shane almost wanted to have nothing to do with this match, The Miz says, like, I, I got it, I got it. You just, you just sit there, relax. And he started to go to town the one guy, and then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, there was a roll-up. And, oh, hey, you. Get over here. Say hi to, say hi to everyone. And if it's a roll-up, what, what do we say about that? Ouch. We say, well, can you meow? No, please. Well, she wants to play with her mouse, I think. Her shoestring. But we say that... It was, it was a surprise. It was a shock, but it's still a ham sandwich of a match. Wow, and I guess... SmackDown was kind of rolling. So then you had the New Day promo. <laughs> They're dressed as pilgrims. Our <laughs> truth looks ridiculous. He's in a turkey outfit. They're having a good time in the backstage. And of course, this, lead, this leads to the oh Thanksgiving Day feast fight, I guess. Um, again, the New Day come out as pilgrims. And it's very difficult to the trick-or-treat street fight. And the fact that on the outside of the ring, there's, like, tables full of, like, Thanksgiving. What would you expect for Thanksgiving? 
You have turkey, mashed potatoes, nothing, green bean casserole. I think that was it. And pancakes. Can't have a New Day match without pancakes. So, yeah, they kind of like tell, tell about what happens at like Thanksgiving dinners, how you throw potatoes, mashed potatoes at that. I forget what kind of uncle they described it. I forget it was condescending. It was a real jerk of an uncle he just throws cold mashed potatoes at. Something like that. Um, again, because this is a match the, the, with the bar, uh, I just want to say Cesaro. No, it is Cesaro. Half the time I call him Caesar. Cesaro. Cesaro and Sheamus. And then eventually the big show come down to ringside. And for the most part, it was it was a fun match. I think the only thing that took away from this match for me, even though there was great there was great technical wrestling involved, again, you have the New Day in the bar. They they can almost do do no wrong. I wonder if I could get a new mic for Christmas. Ooh, Christmas gift idea. But for the most part, I mean the, the wrestling in it's fine. I think the fact that I knew it was it was it was like a trick or treat street fight. It was that really super gimmicky. Ma- it was a it was for the most part a gimmick match. Um, it just kind of took away a little bit. Yeah, and the wrestling the wrestling was fine. It was entertaining. Again, I don't think these two teams could put on a bad match. However, the one thing I will say is this is getting a little old and long in the tooth for me. Again, they have to have a little some fresh new blood. Get get I've always said get the get the well, I can't show this part. There we go. Get the club involved. There we go. Club for life. Even though I think a lot of Luke Gallows has BC BC four on it, so it still has like ha- or hashtag. I think it has hashtag BC. I think, I think my Macho Man shirt's in the laundry. Is it in the laundry? Yeah, I you know, I just washed it. I just washed my DIY shirt. So it's time for a Bullet Club shirt. Which isn't bad. This might actually become a collector's item one day, so I might have to stop wearing it. It's kind of weird. Well, again, it was, it was a good match. Um, eventually, they got to the big show, and they and he was on the ring apron. I think it was Big E. I put him through the one table, and then Cesaro went through another Thanksgiving table. Sheamus went through a third one, and then it was just just a food fight. And then, well, after they picked up the win, they just started throwing food and, and smashing. I think they did like a drop hold to like a pumpkin pie. And Big E ripped up a turkey and wore it like a glove for, I guess, the turkey punch. I'm making this up as a. But again, this was, it was a fun enough match. Again, it. It's getting long in the tooth. It's just, you've seen them so often. This, it's a cheeseburger match, though. I mean, no team can really do wrong in the ring. It was fun. It was enjoyable. And then we have a Randy Orton promo. Again, I like these good old school promos. They're, they're... Nostalgia is a is one heck of a drug. Because I can remember watching the old WWE, and they would it was Saturday Night Wrestling, and like you see the Macho Man cut like the most amazing promos against whoever he was going against. It could have been Jobber McJobbers from McJobberville under the bridge, or it could have been against the Repo Man. It was still an amazing promo. It was, Oh yeah, the Macho Man ran me savage. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I might go 360 degrees. I might go another 360 degrees. Well, I can't do that because I'm kind of wired up. So that would, that would be... 
I shook myself out like that. Some weird stuff there. Begin! It's the Macho Man! He's one of the best. Yeah! Oh, he next. Oh, oh no, the Macho Man's up there. I think the Macho Man's number one. A. And Ric Flair. Oh, yeah! Is one. A. Yeah! Can you dig it? Again, Macho. Still, Savage was still the best in my head. So again, I do like these old school promos. They're fun. Makes makes me nostalgic again. You like things that you're familiar with. Then we have the the Mandy Rose and Boo Sonya Deville. I'm terrible now. I just say Boo Sonya Deville right away. Versus Asuka and Naomi. It was an okay match. I mean, I'm not too thrilled about the fact that Asuka is now in tag teams. They've kind of... WWE's really cooled off on Asuka, where she was this amazing force in NXT. I did see her a few times. I mean, she's amazing looking. She's an amazing wrestler. But in, on the main roster, they've, I don't know, watered her down. It's, it's not the same. I She's lost a lot of steam and momentum. Hey, listen, she can still put on a heck of a match. Um, and this was a this, this was a fun match. I mean, I guess the fact that it's Asuka and Naomi, they just seem really weird as a tag team. I mean, at least Mandy and Sonya, I can understand, because they came up in NXT with page as part of absolution so i kind of understand that why, why they're together again they came from nxt together asuka stayed in nxt much longer than naomi did i don't think Na did naomi ever was she ever in nxt i don't think she was ever because i think she debuted as one of the funk Daleks or Funkadactyls? Fandango. Shows my age. But yeah, it was a fun match. I mean, Mandy Rose is looking so much better. She, It's just crisper. There's almost a, a certain confidence to the way she moves. Oh, Neville is looking pretty good, too. And she was wearing all blue. And I think that's a good color for her. Black tends to be too reflective. The white rainbow colors looks okay. It makes her look like a, a, a rainbow brightish. And that doesn't necessarily fit her character. The blue does, though. And, I mean, it was a fun match. Uh, Sonya Deville taps out to the Oscar lock. Again, there was some miscommunication between Rose and Deville. It was an okay match. It's a ham sandwich. Then you have uh, Daniel Bryan promo, and of course it's going to be Daniel and Bryan versus AJ Styles at Tables, Lives, and Chairs. Number, which will be the last thing I do a, a tape review for. Then I get to go back live. I've learned my lesson. But, um, I don't know, Daniel and Bryan was talking about some weird stuff, about meditation, hyperbolic sh chambers. Um, he, really, he really began to turn the crowd. I mean, he really sounds like a snapped Daniel Bryan. He said, okay, I'm done with all this. I'm just going to be heal Daniel Bryan and do what I feel like. Which, if you took a look at his facial expressions, made sense. So, in that fact, yeah, it works. And this led then to the main event of the evening. In this corner. From the 619. Ray Mysterio Jr. and his opponent in this corner. I forget where he's from. Randall Orton. 
And this was probably, again, this was worthy of being a main event. I mean, you could have had this. I think they were on a couple pay-per-views back in the day. I mean, it's a good classic match again. Nostalgia is a heck of a drug. Especially when they can still perform at such a high level. I mean, Randy Orton, he, he's, he's full heel now. He goes after the mask. The only thing I'm semi-worried about, because they're copying this or this, the thing of uh, TJP as being the taker of masks. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. So they're copying kind of 205 gimmicks, which might work. Hey, it is Randy Orton. I mean, he is the vicious one. I mean, he did stick that screwdriver. And twist the ear. Ooh, still such a visceral, visceral thing. I mean, Ray still has the moves. I mean, he busts out new moves, and I'm sure they're not new moves, but they're not moves you see all the time. So, so they seem new. It seems fresh. Um, again, more, more, more competitive. Feels like a good wrestling. It feels like a legitimate wrestling match. Um. Again, he messed a couple six one nines. Again, Ryan Yorn is smart. He's very, he's very, very learned and knows. Again, it's one of those things where it seems Ryan Yorn studied tape, which uh, makes sense, especially when you're going to face him. Um, eventually, uh, Ryan Yorn did. I, I forget if he did an RKO or not, but he did pin Ray Mysterio. He took the chair. Then he th he rolled Ray Mysterio out. Gave him that viperish stare. And then looked at him. And I can't do what that did. And put that chair around the neck and head area and tore the mask off Ray Mysterio Jr. Ooh, major heat. That's going to lead us to a little break. And now that we're back from break, again, you have my little Yano guess because he does break, break, break. Yano is still the. I wonder if, if he'd ever come to the WWE. I guess that's the one thing, and I'll say this just shortly. I don't think the WWE would never allow the New Japan pro wrestling antics like Yano. Or Naito is also the best. He would just disrespect that IC belt, just throw it around, try and trade for sushi. Trade probably for other things, too. But let's talk about the Mix Max Challenge. Um, I think they're in the brackets now, so the round robin tournament's over, and now I think the they've picked the they had to have the elimination for the teams that have not won anything. A big zero in that win column. Not good. So the first one you have Alicia Mahal. Then that's Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal versus Team Paws, I guess. Glorious Paws of Bobby Roo. Because he's... Actually, wait a second. That's the wrong one. Yeah, the team of Glorious Bobby Roo and Natalia. And... Alicia Fox is way too much. I know she plays a character. I, I don't want to see Alicia Fox in real life. Because there's no way she can be that hyped up on sugar. But she is. And the one thing, brother, is still selling his injuries from... I think when the he squared off or went eye to eye with, with um, Brock Lesnar. It's one of the things where I was wearing the kind of traditional neck brace. That's so funny. Um, Jinder Mahal starts off the match. And for the most part, he has control of the, really the first part of the match. Of course, Alicia Fox wants in after a while. 
I mean, the Ty and Fox are not. They're two pretty good technical wrestlers. Um, I think the only thing that is off-putting to me about Fox is that, again, Fox has a... Alicia. Alicia Fox has a great songs. I'm surprised no Hamtar never said that. That would sound so bad. Ugh. But again, it was good. It was a really good technical match. The wrestling in this match was great. Um, then Rude gets the hot tag. I mean, even Rude takes out the Singh Brothers. Even he gives them the glorious DDT. But again, he's the distracted wrestler. He's not wrestling the Singh Brothers. He's wrestling Jinder Mahal. So Jinder Mahal eventually does get back in the ring, hits the claws on him. Natalia is busy um, uh, fighting on the outside of the ring with Alicia Fox. Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox win. They advance. They get to go to the tournament brackets. Good for them. And I wonder... This is going to be one... So I guess this is going to be over before the new year. We might not be able to live stream. Which might not be a bad idea considering the amount of trouble I've got with this stuff. Um, other matches, it's really easy to get away with because I don't show the video. And sometimes I go off a third party. So it's not that bad. When you do the direct, you have to be really careful. And I've learned <laughs> MGM actually pays someone to watch YouTube videos. Because again, I was manually copyrighted. I had a manual copyright infringement in only certain countries. So I guess they literally pay someone to sit in front of the computer. Oh, that's our content. And then the second match. So again, that was that was that was actually kind of fun. The wrestling was really good. Um, uh, wasn't antic filled with with the exception of Alicia Fox. It was a fun trigger match. And then, again, I don't know. Alicia Fox is such a character because then after the match, they, they had a they had a post match interview with Mahal and Fox. Saying, oh, you finally won! You won one. And I don't know, she was talking about going to get like chicken and waffles, or, like going out somewhere. I, I, who, only Alicia Fox knows knows what Alicia Fox is talking about. She, she just misses. Of a waffle house in Ponce Vedra. That's all. Then our second match of the night it was Carmella and our Truth. Again, you have the fabulous Truth versus the ravishing Rusev Day of Rusa and Lana. And it's just fun. Rusev looks like he's having so much fun. Lana is doing things so much more naturally. I think the only thing I have to say about this is that the entrance actually lasted longer than the actual wrestling did. Not the wrestling match itself, but the actual wrestling involved. Um, again, so Lana comes out to uh, Lana. Everyone goes, chance Lana Day. And of course, everyone says, it's Rusev Day. I don't even know if, I don't even know if I can do that anymore. Where, where has Aiden English been recently? But again, they had a chance off though. Lana Day versus What's Up? And it was fun. The crowd got involved. Hey, you get the crowd involved. That's a good thing. Um, eventually, there was a dance break. And actually, <laughs> it was so funny because I'm going to try and do this standing up. So this is going to be weird because I'm in my Bullet Club shirt. And I'll try to hold this mic so you can see a better view. That was funny because, of course, there we go. You can somewhat see me. And uh, uh, so, so Carmella and and R Truth were were doing their thing in the ring, 
and then I know my head's cut off. I can't raise my computer up anymore. But they got jumped, of course, by Alana and Rusev because they went to the outside. They're like, no, 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 no. No. And they came and jumped them. <laughs> and they just did. Just There we go. Here's a, here's a better you, folks. They just did like a little butt wiggle. That was terrible. That should be copyright violated. If anything else. Actually, watch this. Come over here. Come over here. Oh, this is going to get me fined by the ASPCA. Ready? You're going to see a true putt wiggle. Hey, she has her shoulders, it's not like I'm holding her. Right? Wait, what are you going to do with that paw? Oh! 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 Oh. Okay, I'll let you go back to your nap. Me up a little bit. Always in fall soon. In fall. Critters! Especially my fuzzy kitty cat. So again, it was it was kind of fun. Oh wow, I didn't get the lag like I normally do. That's cool. I did something right for a change. Not botchy. Oh, look at it. was a fun match. Lana's getting better. Again, Rusev just seems to really be enjoying himself. He has to work with his wife in a wrestling ring. That has to be good. Um, again, <laughs> Rusev actually. Lana was holding her own. Rusev eventually. I, oh, reverb. I do have to watch that. I have to get a new mic. I should put it on my Christmas list, darn it. But um, again, Rusev comes in again, starts to beat on our truth. Again, very solid, very solid work from Rusev and our truth. Our truth still is pretty good. Um, Lana gets tagged in, and actually, Lana eats eats the pin. I think the only thing is, Lana keeps on losing though. You're not building up any comp. I, 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 I say with a grain of salt, you're not building up any confidence in Lana. But she needs to get that, that victory eventually somewhere. And Carmella and R Truth win, they get to go they get to be in the brackets. Uh, yeah, this was this was a kind of fun match. Um I, I, it's a ham sandwich match. And the only reason I call it a ham sandwich match is that the antics actually lasted longer than the actual wrestling did. Um, again, it was, it was fun. It was, it was good. It was entertaining. You kind of knew what was going to happen besides Rusev and Lana both doing the dual butt wiggles, which I hate to say it was really the highlight of the whole match. But that was the mixed match challenge. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also leave a comment saying, hey, we want to see more of the cat on your show. More of the more of the of fuzzy cats, less of the hobo. Again, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And again, programming notes probably on Thursday-ish. Hope. I will put up my quasi survivor series, my own wrestling matches. Again, we're going to have the five faces of Tom versus Sting and the Undertaker versus the Stings and the Undertakers. The Keller Boys versus Taj and some mystery partner. We have Los Luchadors. Versus El Gringos. The Four Faces of Heather. Versus the Four Horsewomen. And then we'll have... There's no Hobo Tom? But he's such a... Pounding figure of this. He might, I don't know. He might be on the bridge get, getting some aluminum.
I do. Wait. Oh, I am Lobo Tom. To get my aluminum stick. But we'll see El, El Vagabundo Dos Hobo versus Diamondback Jack Maverick. You never know what will happen, folks. Again, that's for the Under the Bridge Championship. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see everyone later. And also, I think on Friday, maybe, I might get a sneak peek of some Impact Wrestling, which I have not done in a while. But again, there's no more Lucha Underground. I have to get that indie feel fixed somewhere. Have a good day, guys. Or night, or morning, whenever this goes up. Bye.